1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jensen Beach, Hope Sound, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Well, good morning. We have another Another wonderful uh, show on tap. Actually, I'm pretty excited so. about. Oh, we do, Eric. We always have something <laughs> to talk about, and I have uh, Eric Miller here with Talk About Martin. Good morning. Which I love to contribute to. And good morning. That and we're going to be talking about some Martin County issues this morning. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, there's just a, a lot of things going on. And uh, one of the main issues that I've heard kind of bubbling through the community lately are the waste management fee increase, <laughs> the vaccine mandate from county and Indian Town. We're going to talk about that. And also the uh, 15 and 12 percent pay raises for the county administrator position and the county attorney position. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've kind of followed, followed along with some of those and we're going to just talk about them today. So right. I'm going to be following along here on Facebook, folks. Um, if you have a question or comment, I'll be following those those comments through Facebook, or you can call into the studio, 772-220-WSTU. That's 220-WSTU-9788. So a lot of things on tap, but before I get into those wonderful topics, um, I want to thank Indian Town Marina. They're one of my sponsors, and I always have to call them out because we are still in the midst of hurricane season, and a hurricane can come through at, at seems like moments notice and when it does you need safe harborage for your boats and uh, there's really no safer place here on the treasure coast than indian town marina because they're inland they're uh, over in indian town they got a safe hurricane hole and it's so important folks i can't stress this enough make a reservation if you don't use it it's okay but if you need it at least you have a, a, spa- a place to go because hurricane spots they're real short here in the area uh, many people end up not being able to find a place for their boat so call Indian Town Marina and make your reservation. Super important. 772-631-3272. Again, that's 772-631-3272. And also, if you have any work you need done on your boat, they're a do-it-yourself boatyard or full-service boatyard. So prop and shaft work, bottom painting, complete boat painting, so much more. So Indian Town Marina, thank you. And I, I just highly, highly recommend them. So I highly recommend them, too. If you really are into the water, uh, you're into your, your watercraft and you travel on it, you're going to find a community of boaters at the marina. It's more than just a park parking lot for your boat and dry dock. Scott's put together a real nice place down there, the patios, a place to sit out. and You're probably going to meet some of the crazy locals like me out there from time <laughs> to time that stop by just to say hi to Scott and catch up on stuff we and love smoke to see a cigar ya. or what have you. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. It's a great. Scott's a Scott's a great proprietor, and it's a it's a great business. It, it truly is. It yeah. truly is. And and I I think he has a, what is it the Fish House over here in uh, Port Salerno too. So the Fish House Art Center. So yep. another great business that Scott has. But you know, Eric, hmm. how are you doing? Seems like you've uh, <laughs> yeah, well, had a couple know, weeks doing 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 okay. I guess it's been a convalescence period for me. I never figured, but fifty six years old, that they'd close the door behind me and say, "Welcome to old age." What's but, going on? Ah, uh, one thing after another. That there's HIPAA requirements over the years, so we won't talk too much about that. But <laughs> they, they, uh, they, yeah, they locked the door behind me, said, "Welcome to old age," and. Um, you know, evidently there's no manual for it. So, you know, changing some of our, our work patterns and working smarter and not harder because my mobility has really been cut back. And for me, that's tough, man. I'm a, I'm an on-the-go kind of guy. So we're dealing with some physical things God's put in front of us, and they're there for a reason, and we'll, we'll walk through them. But. Well, Eric, I uh, appreciate that you're here today. Uh, we uh, talk too. about Martin. We talk about things that are in Martin County. And it's a, a contributor website where anybody from around the county can contact you and say, hey, I have something to contribute. Or follow what's happening along in the county. It's a great website to know what's well, going on. Well, thank you. And it, we're kind of a watch citizen's watchdog. And we've actually had two real, really, really big stories that I can think of off the top of my head. One is how the $4 million in uh, the, the uh, uh, fees that were raised f- to give money to the teachers in Martin County have actually been allocated. That one came through uh, a legitimate resource coming to us and saying, help me get it out. I'm scared. 
Um, another one was the waste management uh, bid. When the waste management bid was up, we were we had people coming to us saying, "Look, have you heard the other side? Here, are the, here's the contract. Here are the other people, and w you know what can we do to help you get the word out?" So we talk about Martin did a pretty good expose on the on the waste management contract before it was renegotiated, and I think at that the 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 outcome and the the sentiment from that Casey seemed to be well. You, I'll let you run down that road, but the past on it is really telling of where it's at now in my opinion let me just leave it at that well and i think the the latest meeting people are really upset because their tax assessments are coming out on their tax bill and there's a 24 percent increase uh for their waste services and everybody's like wait what's going on so um you know i, I went back i watched the commission meeting which anybody can do it's mctv You'd go on the uh, martin county board of county commission site you can go right there and watch any past meeting and you know, there was a lot of discussion about the diff different waste management companies, and we're going to hear a little bit uh, from a clip from Stacy Hetherington in a minute uh, about how that contract mm -hmm. was awarded. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to go into that tremendously other than the 24% increase. And I will say this, that Ed, Ed Campy, Commissioner Campy, went into a, a, uh, a lengthy discussion as to why he, he chose waste management. And we're looking at other issues with other uh, waste haulers in other counties that are having staffing issues and, and waste management's been here and has always done a good job. And I will say, I got to give kudos to waste management in the sense that um, they are, they're there every week. And I had a neighbor that moved out about a month ago and literally for four weeks in a row, there was a hundred feet of household. I don't think they took anything with them, anything in their house, sofas, wow. tables, everything lined up. And <laughs> I'm like, that is not fair to the waste haulers. That's not really what they're for. But every week they came and picked all that up. It was wow. incredible. So, um, so to that end, you know, waste management, definitely a great, a great company, but that's not what the question was. The question was how the, uh, the contract was awarded, which it's an eight year contract with a uh, six year renewal. And then the 24% increase. Did you happen to get a picture of all of the barrels that were lined up in the field at the fairgrounds? I did not. The recycle, the blue recycle barrels, one stacked on the other, oh, on the gosh. other, on the other, on the other. The ones they're rolling there out had, now. Well, the ones that evidently, if you leave, at least on one side of the road where I live, if you left your recycle bin out, they picked it up and took it with them, and they left you a new little wheelie cart thing. Don't leave me one waste management, please. You can contact me. I'll give you my address. I don't want one. I'm going to end up painting a camouflage, and you're going to end up hating me for it because it, it, it'll take up too much room in my garage. But the question that I have is that mountain of blue barrels of, of polyethylene that are sitting out there that are great for the environment, what did that cost? And if we had not been doing, are we getting ready to go to mandatory lift trucks so that the union That's people... That's what's happening. That, yeah, okay. Well, they are going to mandatory lift great? trucks. And and well, I want my other garbage can that they, they took and threw into the back of a garbage truck back then. I'm, it, it's ridiculous. That's just the thing. And then the county was demanding this, and they demanded they get the natural gas... Uh, trucks so uh, waste management Good and they had to yeah they had to switch over and with the thing Good with Lord. with waste management with those barrels I've got one as well but I had a note on it do not use until October so now I've got two recycle bins in my it says garage we were told at the UN just what yesterday that climate change yeah. this is it we all have to do our part so let's get those natural gas vehicles yeah. running yep. I mean the ramifications be damned that's what's going on and folks you can hear hear all about it at the uh, i think it was the august Good 24th Lord. meeting of the martin county commission meeting and you know, a lot of people have been saying oh my gosh a 24 percent increase you know why why all in one year and uh that's something that could have been spread out and honestly there was a vote in the commission four to one and stacy hetherington was the one commissioner that voted against the 24 percent increase not so much the increase itself but instituting it all in one year because you know folks it may not seem like a lot of money to some people, but it is. Okay. If you're on a fixed can we go, income. Can we just go back for one second here in my yes, mind to the commission meetings prior where this contract was actually being negotiated yes. against another hauler that came in with a much more significant discount and the same level of guaranteed services that they'd have to perform? What was the reason we were told? What was the big push? It's for the kids. It's for the community. It's all the great things they do for the community. And my argument was don't take my money to 
to let somebody else do something in the community. Leave my money with me and I will do to better my own community. Right. Now we're taking 24% for the argument of it was all for the good of the community and the good they do. All things being equal, the one that put me over the top was they do so much for the community. We'll be back. You know, it's crazy. It is. They sold it to this like this to us a few months ago and now there's a 24% increase on the table. What do they take us for? A lot of us don't look at the little screens all day. Right, right. We actually pay attention to the world around us, and that is ridiculous. You know, and that that's one of the big mes messages here, Eric, is with our county commission and really any elected official, mm -hmm. we elect them to represent us, and it's so hard for us as citizens to follow these meetings and realize what's going on, and we are going to get into that. So we're depending on them to make the decisions that we feel is best. So when they don't, um, it's it's a little shocking, and it gets it, it slips by because we can't follow every meeting. They want input, but it's hard for people to I give input. I would argue with you meeting. that the opportunities for them of the things to vote on are not the necessary things that we should even be talking about or them voting on. Right. They are given false choices, false narratives, false opportunities. They're not voting our will. They're voting on what's being put on their plate. They do. That's they, it. They, they do. And uh, Evan, if you can cue up the Stacy Hetherington, this was her feelings on the uh, waste management twenty four percent fee increase. Keep my blood pressure Just a few, down. Um, comments based on some of the, the residents' comments this morning, and Commissioner Campy. A, a lot of what you said, I agree. But you know, from the beginning of this process, um, you know, keep in mind the county hired a consultant to write this this request for proposals. And that was what you described earlier a year or so ago. And, um, you know, that consultant put in exactly what we were asking for. So when we received those bids and they weren't apples to oranges, it's because that provider, waste management, knew the service they were delivering. And the other, I believe, bidders were bidding on what was on the paper, um, right or wrong. And um, our legal staff has already always said they don't want the commissioners involved in those RFP processes, which I always disagree with because some of this um, could have been, I think, prevented on taking input on some of these RFPs because when we put it in that request for proposal and bidders are bidding on it, then they're providing uh, what was requested in that bid. I personally don't agree with everything that we put in that request for proposal. Uh, these bidders provided it. Well, there you go, Eric. That's just what you were talking about. She's actually amplifying what I'm saying, and it all comes back from uh, a, a, not too far back in our past. But uh, there's a system that's running the system. The elected don't have a choice. They All they have is an illusion of integrity sitting up there. The choices that they're presented with are false choices because everything's being administered for them. Congress does the same thing. There's two powerful acts that took place in the United States over the course of our history that actually abdicated the responsibility of CAG co Congress to agencies, FBI, um, uh, uh, the, the Department of Education, all these different, the FDA, all these different departmental, they make regulations and they administer the business of the people. Right. Well, we have administrators locally with the rules that are put in front of them. You should read the statute that governs the administrator and, and gives what they can and can't do within the county. It's very telling. So, you know, our system, our system's sick right now, um, both locally and at a national level, and it's going to take people like you and I and the people listening to this to actually accept the fact that there are problems as adults, and we need to begin having conversations on what we agree with that does work, and let's get rid of the rest of it for a while. There's some pain coming, guys, and if we can't do it on the same page, we're going to be in real trouble. We really do as citizens need to take charge, and one thing that surprised me, you know, Stacy said that they don't want the commissioners in charge of the RFPs. Well, my goodness, we have elected the commissioners to work for us, so if we're just taking staff's recommendations and they're just voting why do we have commissioners uh, that's a very good question you know if all that's they're going to do is question. take staff recommendation forget about it just let staff run the county that's well, what that's howard what's brown's happening. running the village of indian town there's staff running the uh, a whole elected body so yeah. you know i mean that's where we as citizens it's just good to talk about get it out there as you said 
this isn't just happening locally it's happening all the way up on a national level and it's level. a plan it's actually it's actually a plan that was put forward from you know Woodrow Wilson uh, was one of the big instigators of the progressive movement and um, there's a book I brought with me called Philip Drew Administrator and y- you need to look this one up it's an afternoon read it's Edward Mandel House uh, who is the author and it speaks about how the engine got started to have a system that would run and administer itself regardless of who was in office. Can it you hold matter. that cover up so folks on uh, Facebook and YouTube you can go. see what it looks like? Woodrow Wilson actually read this four times. This was one of his favorite books on how to create an administrative governmental It was world, and that was his panacea. And, well, here you are, guys. That's We're right. here. You're That's being right. administered. Everything that you do is being administered, and it's an illusion of integrity at this point. And, uh, folks, if you want to join in the conversation, 772-220-9788. That's 772-220-WSTU. And, of course, I'm watching right here on Facebook Live for comments and uh, questions as well. Uh, the next topic I want to go into, Eric, as there was a vote very recently for the county administrator and county attorney pay raises. The county administrator has a 15% increase. And Taryn Krista is our current county administrator. She is leaving the county next year. They made it very clear this wasn't something she asked for. This is something that, um, again, the staff in the county said, we need to look at everybody's salary because we got to worry about retention and whatnot. And Iggy, there's a visual if you could put up. We're going to start talking about that a little bit. And uh, Eric, I had sent you a copy as well. The county attorney got a 12% increase. Now, folks, the current salary for our county administrator is $190,000. So this bumped that salary level up to $219,000. The county attorney, her current salary level is $180,000. That bumps her salary up to $202,000. Now, I did a little research here before the show that I wanted to share with you, and if you're on YouTube or Facebook, and this will go on YouTube after, after the program ends today, you'll be able to see it. But I looked at counties that had um, similar sizes in their county administrator positions. And one thing I noticed, and I'm gonna ask uh, Evan here to play it in one second, um, Matt Graham, he's the HR director for the, uh, Matthew Graham, for the county, had went through and said, well, we have compared salaries of public entities, 58 public entities. And that caught my attention. I'm like, why aren't we comparing salaries to other county administrators in Mm. counties of similar size? What's these public entities? Well, it turns out it's Palm Beach Gardens, Jupiter Island, city managers. Not the same position. So if you would go ahead and just play that clip, Evan, from Matt, Matthew Graham. Um, We also look at our surrounding counties, cities, and um, those areas where we might be losing some of our employees in the middle of next year. And so anticipation of preparing for our budget and planning for our future, uh, we've looked at the market analysis for our county administrator position. We've also looked at our county attorney position. Both of these are two contracted positions um, that we have with the county. Um, based upon a review of 48 public, I'm sorry, 58 um, Florida public entities, the average salary rounded up for the county administrator is 219000 and uh, the, for the county attorney, it's 202000 rounded up. Um, so we're requesting that, at a minimum, the county administrator uh, be adjusted to 219000 and our county attorney be adjusted to 202000 So, folks, they picked public entities, again, it's not county administrators, and just did an average. So now, Iggy, if you can put that, that screenshot back up, let's compare some counties that are similar in size, their county administrator and county attorney salaries, those that have county attorneys. Martin has a population of about 161,000. We currently are paying 190,000 to the county administrator and the attorney is getting 180,000. Indian River, virtually the same size, 160,000. Their county administrator, 198,000. County attorney, 173,000. Citrus County, 153,000 population. The county administrator, 154,000. The attorney, 151,000. Charlotte County across the state, 188,000 population. 
196,000 for the county administrator, 211,000 for the county attorney. Bay County, 182,000 population. Their county administrator, 170,000. I don't believe they have a county attorney. I couldn't find a salary for that. Hernando County, 194,000 population, about 30,000 more. County administrator, 173,000. County attorney, 166,000. Okaloosa, population 211,000. So we're looking at about 50,000 people more than us. The county administrator, 160,000. I didn't get an attorney for there. Santa Rosa, 184,000. The county administrator is 147,000. And the county attorney I did not find there. So the average county administrator right now in similar counties of our size, 175,000. Ours right now is 190,000 going up to 219,000. Average county attorney out of these counties, excluding Martin, $175,000. Ours was at $188,000, will now be $202,000. This vote just went through the county, and it was a four-to-one vote, and Commissioner Hurd was the only one that voted against it. And Evan, I have a clip about, uh, from Commissioner Hurd about how she felt about this. I, I certainly understand that we need to adjust salaries at times for recruitment and for retention purposes. But that's not the case here. Um, I, an increase of, for the county administrator of $29,000 and for the county attorney of $22,000 is, um, is, is excessive. And it's excessive especially considering that that would, be at, that would become the new base. And the county administrator is leaving us next year. So that would be a $29,000 increase that would be our new base. And so I, th I think that if you, if you want to, to uh, compensate, reward the county uh, administrator and the county attorney, and I certainly believe that they should be a, a rewarded, but do it, 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 make it a cash reward, not adding to the base. So I'm not going to be supporting this. I think that we should, I think that we should work to, to devise a, um, an appropriate raise, but not like this. So that was Commissioner Hurd and her feelings on this, uh, you know, 12 and 15 percent raise for positions that, in my opinion, compared to other counties, they were already at the top of the level. They were already above average. So somebody's got to be number one. Somebody, we are. <laughs> <laughs> We are. Um, and again, I, what caught my attention was why are we comparing salaries of public entities? Why are we not comparing salaries to the apples to apples, the same position, county administrators and county attorneys? And, you know, part of that actually uh, popped out at the very end of Commissioner Hurd's comments, which was not on this clip. I have one uh, that I'm going to try and play off my phone here because I didn't get it into the radio in time, but, uh, you know, why would we be giving such huge raises right now? And, and by the way, I agree with Commissioner Hurd, give a bonus if you need to, but these are not positions that we're worried about retention. I mean, neither You're being position. gracious. You're using actual math to try to solve the problem, <laughs> assuming that everyone else is. And I think the bigger problem here is the lack of principle and ethic, that the ethos that's missing from this. Look, a complicated equation, right? Taryn has done a very good job for what she does, okay? I would argue, again, because of the argument that comes from Philip Drew Administrator, that we should not have administrators within these counties. Okay, now what, though? I mean, the pool's so deep and we're so entrenched in it, it's statutorily there. We're there. You have these people. So what do you do? Do you pay to get the best and, and, and reward the best? I would in my business. I guess if you're the number one employer within the county and you know you have thousands of employees that you're taking care of, there's a, there's a reward factor monetarily that should go with that, disassociating government from private business. However, I'm still upset that we're in a position that we even have to have this argument because of the way the system has been rigged against itself and that commissioners would sit there and God love Taryn. I, I look, Taryn, I, I've worked with Taryn over the past two decades, okay, in a lot of different capacities, not not one on one all of the time, but she's helped get things done for other nonprofits and things that I've worked right, for right. and other initiatives within the community and the county and governmentally through the GOP and everything else that's that's happened. I got nothing against Taryn, okay? Taryn's good at what she does, but 
guys, you don't you don't set a precedent of giving that large of a percentage of a raise because you think that you you want her to know she's appreciated. Well, the taxpayers would appreciate their money too because that base raise goes against her. Look at the other end of the, the financial formula you haven't put in there yet, and that is what happens to the state pension fund that she's obviously going to be a governmental member of. That's, um, and that is, I, I don't have that formula in there. There's more to this, know, Eric, It's though. complicated, there's, but I there's just, more to I'm this. upset with the fact that we're at the point that we even have to have the discussion that this should have even been an idea well, to take place. Well, what was disappointing to me is, is uh, you know, the, the commissioners, nobody said, why are we comparing to public entities? Why aren't we comparing to other county administrators? There was really no discussion. There was a bunch of support except for from Commissioner Hurd. And I thought, these are, I mean, how, how would you like, you're at almost 200,000, you get a 15% increase. I mean, that just, you know, dun, is dun, dun, unheard dun. of. I know, my <laughs> goodness. And and I want to make this clear. Taryn Krista, Sarah Woods, they did not ask for this. This was brought up by, um, it was presented by Matthew Graham, the HR director, and Don Donaldson, the deputy county administrator, and they made it clear this is not, you know, Taryn's leaving next year. This yeah, is going to be a, a big I, bonus for I the next Taryn administrator. I know well enough to know that she, she has enough personal respect and credibility for herself that she would not bring that. She, she did I, not. She, she did not. And not. by the way, this is the only two positions the Board of County Commissioners are responsible for hiring, and that's the, the attorney and um, the county administrator. However, there was a little thing that popped out at the end that I mentioned before. I said, why are we giving such big raises? What What uh-huh. is this averaging of public entities? And I'm going to play off my phone here. Hopefully, folks, this works. Another comment by Commissioner Hurd that came right after the comment you just heard earlier. And also, I think that the next step which is promised in here is to look at department heads salaries and i don't want to see the same sort of uh, recommendations coming out of department uh head salaries also and but i think that that's that's where we're being led wait what department head salaries are coming next so are we going to decide 12 and 15 percent across the board for department heads because that's what they recommended for the county administrator and the attorney folks this is why we bring this up this is something we need to watch this is a lot of money this is our money and uh and give me a second here i gotta turn my video back off on my phone so <laughs> so that was uh, something that was quite eye-opening uh, that Commissioner Hurd popped that out at the end, that there's more to come. There are more raises to come, and uh, we've set a base standard now of 12 to 15 percent. So, I'm going to post on the talking notes, uh, or, or the, the show prep and the, and the talking notes that we're going to do with the show today up on Talk About Martin Casey on your page. And I'm going to put Florida Statute 125.74 up there, and it's the county administrator's powers Uh, and duties, what they actually can and can't do. And these are enumerated powers. They're not limiting powers. They are enumerated. So the things that are said here are the only powers that a county administrator has. Some of these are very broad in stroke. And as you go through them, you know, setting the, the salaries for those department heads is stipulated within this here. So, and when you look, it all comes back at the end. It's convenient. It says, with recommendations from the county commission with recommendation from the county commission so they always turn it back around to say the county can always say well we got to vote on it yeah well you got right. to vote on what was brought before you that's it well it seems like again I'm, I'm starting to wonder why we have a commission if we're just taking staff recommendation I mean we could save a lot of money not having salaries to the commissioners not having the retirement the pensions if, if all they're gonna do is take staff recommendation well I think you just hit the nail on the head though where the department had increased recommendations coming back they don't originate with the commission they originate with the administrator and the administrator brings those recommendations forward and no other side is shown to the commission the commission has to do their own homework to understand where they even stand unless you just take the administrators and this is not talking Taryn this is in every county in the state of Florida that works this way you take that administrators well we know our administrator give us the information that we want well maybe maybe not maybe it doesn't politically align with with your your uh, understanding of the Constitution, for one, you got to look at these things for yourselves, guys. You, I mean, you've abdicated too much responsibility and put too much power into the hands of too many people, and it's it, 
given Mark Breckbill show just before this, I mean, you listen to Mark. Mark will tell you the same darn thing. There are some really hard and ugly financial mm -hmm. times coming, and if they think at the county level that okay. they're going to continue to be able to use this kind of a budget level in the crises that's coming in the next year and a half to two years, they're out of their mind. They should be stockpiling right. every bit of capital goods and equipment that they can right now and scaling the heck back. That's right. The economy yeah. always goes up and it goes down. It never stays up. And you're absolutely right. You have to plan for rainy days, rainy times. Unbelievable. And, you know, I'll make one more comment about the county administrator email. Again, uh, her salary is, what, 190000 There is another county, and a lot of this came to light, uh, that is looking for Santa Rosa County. They're looking for a county administrator, and their salary was the lowest at 147000 almost 50000 below hers before the 15% the increase. And they are having difficulty, but I get that. The average is 175. So there's a happy balance, but, again, folks, we have to question, how do we – Staff is kind of cherry picking public enti entities, not similar positions, but just public entities. They cherry picked them and said, oh, we're just going to average them all, and there was the increase. So, um, just a, a huge topic that we need to just follow our commission. And this is one of many decisions that we need to uh, just keep our eye on. I mean, it's, it's hard. I, Eric, I said it before. We hire them because we think they're going to vote the way we want, you know, uh, vote our values. That's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. And, you know, it's easy to get caught up in life and not follow these commission meetings. But, folks, I mean, hard times are coming, and, and it's not easy for everybody right now. Not everybody's making $200,000 a year <laughs> where, you know, a $75 increase on your, your waste services in one year is, is a lot to some people. And yeah. these increases, there this are is a tax money. These things called fixed Income. incomes That's right. that are out there. That's right. What Don Bongino, Bongino have to say about this wonderful oh, commission at the last Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Lincoln Day dinner. I was at the Lincoln Day dinner with yeah. uh, uh, Dan Bongino, and he really called out the commission. And it was uh, Sewell's point as well as the county commission. And he said, start acting like Republicans and, you know, stop just raising taxes. And he did not mince words. It was really an excellent Lincoln Day dinner. And it really, the, the point that hits home is you've got to get involved. That means we, the residents, you have to know what's happening. It starts locally. You can't, there's a lot ha happening nationally, and boy, Eric, you and Maybe I Maybe they'll listen on, to him for a change, because I echoed that vocally in front of the same group of people a decade ago, and they ran me out of town. So good luck, Dan. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. you're a celeb so that they'll listen to you, and if that's what it takes, well, I don't know if God they will. bless you, brother, but thank you for will. calling them out in their own house. He there did. needs to be some responsible reform that takes place within the GOP, especially in Florida. I think it's a wake-up call. I know everybody's, you know, it's not just an easy vote. You just, it's not a feel-good vote, and you're not voting for friends. You need to vote what's best for the constituents, so. But people don't even understand what's out there. I don't think yeah. they even understand how their governments run. No. I, I, even no. at a local level, Sewell's Point, I doubt they do. All they know, all they know is that they, their trim notice goes up or down. That's right. the only thing they care about. Or there's a pot or what goes room. into it. That's exactly no. right. And, and it's okay. I mean, if you can be in that position, but don't get upset when things don't go your way because you're not monitoring the system or the people that are right. providing what you expect to be there for you. That's right. Because it's going to run away. It's going to it's going to say, hey, they're not looking. Let's go over here. Alicia Parentow said, "Your book. Could you hold it up again? She yep. didn't quite see it." And there you go. perfect, perfect. Still so. through administrator. There we go. Thank you so much. Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Amazon has everything. Love Amazon. So, <laughs> all right, Eric, the, yes, I'm going to let you take the lead on this topic because uh, it's something that you first alerted everybody to through Talk About Martin, and that is the vaccine mandate with Indian Town and the county administrator. They're calling it. it yeah. It, uh, they're calling it incentive. It's we won't right. it's not incentivize necessarily a people to get the vaccine. Well, w when I saw this, I'm thinking, okay, now I, I cannot draw a distinction between, you know, private and government at this point. The government has no business spending my money, uh, especially when the elected are not approving the expenditure of this money, to incentivize people to get a vaccine that for whatever moral, religious, or just common sense reasons don't want to get it. OK, it is a means of segregation to try and say, well, we're going to give you extra sick time if you get it. And if you don't get it, well, you're going to spend your sick time and then you'll have to spend your vacation time, too. And we can't help you 
so get the vaccine. It's like, look, these people are working with kids at home, with families trying to, to, to live the life that got you to the $225,000 salary every year. I mean, $20,000 a month in a paycheck, boy. I, I, I hope you yeah. got some good tax shelters for that one because that's just juicy. But to try to use my tax dollars to then segregate people, to force them into something where now the truth is kind of coming out about this virus. 60% of Florida's hospitals right now are full of people that are fully vaccinated but have COVID. The, the idea that you're trying to save the continuity of government, I can't be without all my government workers. Well, I'll tell you what, let the people of Martin County and Indian Town try to get along without 20% of their people for a little bit. It might actually be good to show that you're a little bloated in your staffing and the administration of it's all overdone. Mm -hmm. But the, the ethical point, I'll tell you what, why don't we just have those members of Indian Town government employees and the county employees put little yellow stars on their lapel if they're not vaccinated and walk around the halls all day long. It's just and, about and, it. and how do you get across HIPAA requirements, personal medical information to even come to me and say, are you vaccinated? None of your damn business. Absolutely right. I mean, it, it, it astounded me, too, that unvaccinated employees are not eligible for a sick leave. Um, they have to use their, va you know, their vacation pay. But yeah. if you're vaccinated, it, and Taryn, there's many emails. Uh, folks, again, you can go in and read county commission and county administrator emails. Type in Google Martin BOCC emails. A link for it will come in, and you can read every email you want. They are public record. Uh, Taryn, many people talked to her about it, and Eric, you were one of them. You wanted some answers. Did you ever get answers? I did get an answer back, and one of the questions that I asked was, what gives you the constitutional authority to be able to take this step as an administrator? Where is your constitutional right to implement this? Why is the commission not having to vote on this? And I was told in here, and I'll try and find it again, but to paraphrase her, she said that this was not something that the board should, that the commission should be voting on, and she would never bring it to them to vote on to begin with. Um, she gives her legal guidelines under the statute that I'm going to post, 125.74. And after going through it with a little critical thinking skill, I know you can look that up on Amazon too. There's plenty of books about critical thinking. Um, the area that I found in here, the most likely place in the statute that actually gives her the authority to do this, and it's still, I, I, again, this is a, written with so much room in it 125.74 of the florida statutes um, dot i uh, develop install maintain centralized budgeting personnel legal and purchasing procedures so she has to develop install and maintain centralized procedures. personnel procedures procedures so she put that under a procedure it is coming under a procedure. Now, if you could proceduralize an incentive for me, I would like to see a procedural incentive put on a, on a line, on a, on a nice little logic tree and show me it's an oxymoron. The two don't work together. You don't proceduralize incentive. Right, right. You're absolutely, I, I agree with you 100%, Eric. That is. <laughs> so I'm against this one, Taryn. You're wrong. I understand probably her. Her motives, I think, as an administrator and wanting to maintain her domain, she has that responsibility. She's being paid graciously for it to maintain continuity. She obviously believes at some point that the virus is better affected by the vaccine and the people are better served by having vaccinated workers. Okay, that's your thinking. I can throw a thousand things on the table that would discredit that. The point being is this isn't something that we should be having this type of, again, discussion on a virus. What is it next time? That's, what is it, short hair, long hair? That's right. I and mean, this is America. That's the end of the day here is, you know, okay, call it a procedure. Call it what you want. Many people are calling it more of a mandate. Either way, this is America. It's up to people to have that decision whether or not they want that vaccine. And 
my goodness, Eric, if you want to get it, get it. If you don't, you should have that right not to. I agree with you, too. And everybody's talked that horse to death, and we all know where we're standing. We're not going to change anybody's mind. But again, come back to Philip Drew Administrator, where we've statutorily now set up a system that gives the administrator permission to do the same things that we're warning about. Right, right. It's the system created. It's not prophecy. It's unintended We're consequences, too. Is That's it. right. It's unintended consequences of how these regulations are written. They're exactly. interpreted. And, and lack of oversight by our elected officials because we're not holding them accountable for right. the things that they think need to be done. They blame the agency. They, well, yes. they gave their power to the agency. What in the heck do they expect? It, it seems like there's, there's a need to pull some of these reins back. And I'm sorry it comes down to politics. Dirty word with a lot of people. It's politics with a K anymore or an X at the end. But the GOP in Martin County is no better than the Democrats because the Democratic Party was decimated. 20% of their people flooded into the GOP, and you'll find a large percentage of them in leadership of the local GOP at this point, okay? I can tell you that from experience and fact. So it, you really got to know who's who and what you believe in. That If you're going to go with a political party, you better figure out who they are and what they stand for before you get in there. And don't take lip service because there's a lot of that that goes on, a lot of lying, a lot of false virtue. Well, I think a lot of people are frustrated with both pr parties right now, and I think that's... All they want to do is win. All they want yeah. to do is get elected. Get my guy in, my team, go team, go team. How about some principled people to go in and do the principled hard work that we need to do? How about going in and rolling back some laws? Let's say for the next 10 years, all we're going to do is That'd roll laws back instead of creating them. That would We'd be never amazing. even make a dent. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't make a dent. And it's crazy. And, and what a fight that would be, honestly. And, you know, this happens in all walks. We're just talking about the vaccine. But this reminds me being in Washington, D.C. back in, I think it was 2013 with the water issues. You know, the Army Corps engineer said, oh, it's not us. It's Congress. Congress said, it's mm -hmm. not us. It's Department of Environmental Quality. And it's just everybody pointed a finger at somebody else, and nobody is there to take responsibility. So It's all being administered. It's all Because it's all Because no one has yeah. the authority to do There's anything. No My regulations say I can't <laughs> do that. So, Eric, you also brought a clip from Indian Town, and you know, yeah. tell us a little bit about what's going on in Indian hey, Town. Hey, God bless America, people. And when a good American is elected to office, you stand up and you let the world know. There was, you've heard me talk on this show and on Talk About Martin. I've exposed uh, a, a young elected official by the name of Anthony Dowling, and he is a councilman in Indian Town. And he was recently uh, nominated to be elected during the, the last transition that their council does every year to elect a mayor and a vice mayor. Well, Anthony was um, nominated for vice mayor. And at that point, Miss Susan Gibbs Thomas, who was the first mayor of Indian Town, I'll right. remind everyone, yes, she was. had a council comment. And if we could, if you have that queued up, go ahead and play what she had to say for us. Council. Get Susan, Council Member Gibbs, Susan Thomas. Thank you. Um, I would just like to say this past year, the comments from this dais by the nominee have not supported all of Indian Town and does not support the constitutional values of Indian Town residents and as we, the elected officials, are sworn to do. And having listened to Indian Town's residents wish on this, I cannot support this nomination. Awesome. She stood up for what she believes her constituents, what she's there to be elected to do. Amen. Absolutely. She didn't call names. She was right out in the open with it, and I'm that's right. the way it needs to be done. Susan's there for the right reason in Indian Town, and that's why they don't like her, because the right things require a certain level of common sense. And when you try to obfuscate common sense, you get into chaos, right. and there's a lot of that going on. We can see it. And it's very tough with with the council because there's five councils. So if you don't have majority, I mean, she's like almost it seems like she's kind of the lone voice out there. She is the lone voice. And I'll tell you what, here's a perfect opportunity. Local Martin County GOP, Indian, Sta Indian Town is still in your, your uh, you know, county right, out right, here. Believe right. it or not, we are in Martin County. 
here's an opportunity to come out and try to support this next election, maybe even though it's nonpartisan, but there's a lot that the GOP can do with its machine to help support people like Susan, maybe help recruit some people out there that hold values that are closer to the center, the, to the people, to the independent way of thinking uh, that are not all aligned with people like Anthony Dowling, who's a member of a progressive organization called YEO, Young Elected Officials, which is founded by the Tides Foundation and others. It's an outshoot of this corrupt 30-something think of cancel culture, Black Lives Matter, all the evil that is coming politically through the progressive movement. Thank you, Philip Drew Administrator and Woodrow Wilson again. That's the direction. When you look at the direction where Wilson and all of these things are going, on the political scale, you can see that where it's actually leading you. And I'll put this up on our talk show or on our, our uh, talking talk about points Martin. as well to kind of let, give you a visual as to if we continue down the road of all of these bad natured ideas and ideologies and just adhere to them because it's our team, America's going to end up in a very bad place and it's going to be a very dark place. And I think that we could end up making some of the dark times in this world look really bad because we're pretty educated people and we got some creative ideas. I, I don't, I don't like where it's going. You know, we need to turn our face back to God, quite honestly, individually first, and then we can talk about maybe collectively doing it. But if we don't each turn back to the right direction that we know to be right, nothing's going to change. Nothing will change. And Eric, I think we really need to look at not just parties, we need to look at the person. I mean, I think there's such an underbelly of uh, a current of undermining of America. This happens in both parties. So if we're oh, not yeah. really evaluating the candidates, you know, just because we're voting told, for RD doesn't mean that's what you're I was getting. told by a sitting lieutenant governor, he asked me why, as running for chairman, why would you want to build the party why would you want more people in the party and i looked at him astonished and he said i'll never repeat this you can say it if you want i'll never admit to saying it but he said we can control a smaller number of people easier than we can control a large group of independent thinkers they do not want you involved in the system it is an illusion of integrity folks and once that glass breaks and you see it know that there are other people out there that are awake like you because once you see what's really going on behind that wall there's no walking back out there's no there's no curtain to walk back through you either accept reality or you live in this cognitive dissonance this dystopia right. that right. you've got to pretend and that's not healthy mentally or physically for anyone no. the human the human the human is not set for that type of of uh environment no, and, and Eric Miller, I want to point out to you, you've been involved in politics for a very long time. And, you know, I, I appreciate all that you have done to try and bring a voice, especially to the Republican Party, a conservative voice. Well, and, thank you. you know, <laughs> You're about the second person that said <laughs> that to me. I appreciate oh, I, it. I don't know about that. But, you know, it's, it's really something, and maybe someday we'll talk a little bit more about your involvement in the Republican Party. You were part of the Republican Executive Committee. You were on a state level. Yeah. State committeeman, and two terms. What you just years. said, that they didn't want you to bring more people into the party because they can control a smaller group. That's When I started, I ran against the then-sitting Jim Greer um, as chairman coming in as freshman. I started my campaign before I'd even taken my seat. I'd won the election but hadn't been confirmed yet. And I began running for chairman at that point. Charlie Crist was our wonderful, illustrious governor. And I stood at the podium. I shook Charlie's hand and walked up to the podium and kind of let loose with it's time for some responsible reform this crap that's going on is ridiculous and that's marco rubio was serving as a state committeeman with me at that point and uh, there was a big scandal with uh, american express cards and uh, jim greer ended up actually spending time in prison um, because a lot of people were able to start talking about things and you have to you can't be afraid to say what you know needs to be said i mean it's i don't know it, it's it's like the kid at Christmas when everyone's sitting around and says, where's crazy Uncle Joe? Well, now you can call him crazy Uncle Joe. We never used to say that Uncle Joe was crazy, but now right. the little kid did, so it's out in the open, so we can all say it. And that's just kind of what has to be done sometimes. Well, you just mentioned Charlie Crist. That's a poster child for why you shouldn't be voting for a name. That man was a Republican, then he became an independent, now a Democrat. Where are his values? What does he stand for? Where's the values of the RPOF at that point, too? I mean, I was able to take a third of the vote. 
by being an unknown, just with a message and something that I was delivering and, and what brief resource and opportunity I had to get to the, the, the people that I needed to get to to vote for it that were the RPOF. They were the Republican Party of Florida. They were the ones that were making these decisions. They were the ones that were the sponsoring candidates and were responsible for the upbringing of the where's where's the next class of our our, our politicians there's there's no recruitment that's done it's who has the most money who can show up at a cocktail party and who has the most influence what's the biggest boondoggle of the day that you can provide some support for nine times out of ten is what it boils down to well that's what it feels like to me eric is that you know with with the republican party for instance they get a candidate they feel is most elect electable, not necessarily the best candidate, not the one that holds the most conservative values. It doesn't matter. As long as they have an R behind that name, let's get them elected. It doesn't matter if they hold conservative values or not. And, you know, that's a real problem because that comes from within. It does come from within, but the problem that you have is when you start getting to the top and the leadership is promoting this R, this big R yeah. or this big D, and what's behind it, they're – they're doing so much more in the background. Like the lieutenant governor said, we can control a smaller number of people. Relax. Let us get done what we need to get done. Yeah. It's for the better of the party. It's for the better of this. It's for the better of that. No, it's not. A bird has two wings, right? Right. You take one wing away, it's not going to fly. One wing gets weak, it's not going to fly properly. And our nation's a lot like that. We have two parties, two wings. Right. We don't leave the ground unless both of those wings can work together. And I'm telling you, we're sitting on the tarmac right now. It's we're a, in trouble. It's a there's really, no, really there's good no analogy. Yeah. It's, it's a very good analogy. And, you know, you have to look at how this country, where it's going. I mean, look at the last 30 years. Think about where you were 30 don't years ago, me. where the country was. Don't make me. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> but, but it's my point that we really have to get uh. involved, and things may change. Like, this might be just one decision, a vote that comes up, and you think, ah, it's only one vote. But it's not. It snowballs over time. And I, I look I want, at where we are today. I've got to go one step past that, Casey, because before you go down to make your voice heard on something, understand why you are making your voice heard. Okay, and don't feel because it doesn't go that you're defeated. You have to understand what's actually happening that brought this thing that you don't agree with to the forefront. What have you not been looking at that allowed the people that you were trusting to tell you that all was going to be good and all of a sudden all is not good? And now what do you do? Well, I'm not going to make a difference. I'll just sit here. They're going to continue to do the same thing. So, yes, speaking up is good. But understand why you got to the point that you had to speak up first. And that takes watching what's going on. You don't have to be a scholar. All you have to do, listen to 15, 20 minutes of the next commission meeting. I don't care when or how you do it. Take your phone to the bathroom with you and listen to a commission meeting for 10 minutes. And try to listen to the words and see if you can figure out what your elected are actually doing. We are, actually, we're in a really good time right now because technology does enable us to watch the commission meetings. And, you know, right now they, they posted after the meeting the video of it, and it, it's targeted by the topic. So, you know, you can There's point no right to that topic, and if only three of them are something that really concerns you, you only have to watch those three. You don't have to sit through eight hours of commission meeting. Multitask. Right. You can multitask. <laughs> Absolutely. Plug it into your <laughs> ear pods when you're in your car it's, and listen to ten minutes of it for goodness see sake. See if those commissions, if you agree with them or not. You know, I mean, and if they don't, my say something. You have to stand up. And have to. When it comes time for voting, I mean, this last time was a really strange election because – in most cases, there was not any uh, opponent. It was because you have a single party. Right. You have a single think here in this county. And if you think for one second that it's even close to conservative, forget independent. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. my goodness. Right. They're neocons. Right. They're at the bottom end of the scale. It is. It's very eye-opening. I'm and speaking in generalities. There's a lot of good people, and I know a lot of good people that are involved with the local GOP, and they're well-intended. But, again, they're in a system that's – they have to conform to. Well, it is. There's a lot of pressure to conform. And again, it's because, well, we got Republicans got to win no matter what, so you got to vote R. And it's well, like you have to sign an oath that you won't speak ill of the Republican Party or any of the candidates once you are elected to either a precinct committee seat or to a state level seat. And those are the, your two entry points into the system. And you can't say anything adverse to the party or the people that are elected. So how do you make change within a party if you can't criticize your own party for its own mishaps? That's a very good point. I mean, that's, they're silencing you. 
you know? And that's what happened to you. I mean, that's... Well, it did happen. I understand why they did it, because a bunch of Democrats would join the Republican Party and just come in and do nothing but badmouth, and they wouldn't have any way to go. And, you know, if they want to call me a Democrat, they're fine to do that. I really don't care. I'm not. But um, there has to be a mechanism internally to deal with these types of things. Well, this is Eric Miller with Talk About Martin. Folks, talkaboutmartin.com. There's also a Facebook page. This is a great place to go to get a lot of different issues that are happening around the county. Also, if you have something to contribute, reach out to Eric. He'll make you a contributor. Right and, and uh, you know, it's always good to hear from everybody. Again, and talk about martin.com. Um, also, the show is now on YouTube at caseyingramshow.com. If you go to my Facebook page, click on the YouTube link, you'll get right there. And I look forward to seeing you next week. We're going to have Terry Barber on the show.